Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Liquis Digital Marketing Podcast. In this episode, we are talking about how to build your email list through gated content. What is gated content and why should you care? First off, gated content. Basically what that is, is it means your content is hidden or gated, it's behind the gate. And in order for someone to get that content, they need to give you something in return. In most situations, when we're talking about gated content, we're talking about having some piece of content that is behind the scenes where someone's going to then give you their email address and in exchange for this piece of content or access to something. So that's what gated content is. So, but you know, what's the big deal about it? Like, why would you even care? Why should you even use it or worry about it? Well, the reason why you should be using gated content is because it's one of the top ways and easiest ways to build your email list. Okay, why should you worry about building an email list? Well, if you're a business and you want to increase and maximize your sales, building your email list is gonna be one of the best ways to go about that. It's gonna help you build a list of motivated buyers. It's gonna be able to give you the ability to keep that conversation going with your audience. An example, so I guess the value of an email in a recent study is six to ten dollars so that dollar figure is basically what is called replacement cost which is what a business would spend on google adwords or uh, pay-per-click campaigns to get a customer if someone's going to your website and filling out a form and giving you their email address then think of that email address as the value of like six to ten dollars you know, why should you care about that? Well, if you're going through this process of setting this up where you're gonna give someone some piece of content or some value, you better be sure that the value you give meets or exceeds that monetary value. Would If you came up to somebody and said, hey, do you want this, you know, PDF printout for $10? Probably gonna get a lot of no's. You know, but if you sell it as, you know, this value and they're exchanging their email address, you're going to get a lot of yeses. Anyway, the whole point of that is to make sure that you really understand what the value is. And if you're running ads out there and and paying to get downloads, you know, what should you expect? Like six to ten dollars for an email. So and I would I would say that's that could be questionable because I know and I will probably get some kickback on this. I know you can go out and run some Facebook ads and some Instagram ads. And if it's done right, you can get, you know, downloads for under $6 a download. Surely you can, but it's an average. Okay, so let's talk about gating content. So, you know, we understand, okay, gating content is we have this item of value that somebody that we are, we're going to give somebody in exchange for their email address. So what are some of these items of value? You've most likely downloaded these before, but here are some ideas. So and the ideas that you can use and really in, in any industry, you can come up with something. There's always something of value that you can give. One of the most popular is a PDF of like a guide, like a how to guide. Another one would be a worksheet. So a worksheet, something that is going to help your audience in some way. And this how-to guide could be something that like walks through the instructions of how to do something. Um, another idea is a calendar or a planner or some type of organizer that's gonna help them make their life easier in some way. Or another idea, instead of giving a piece of content, is maybe give special access to some of your premium content. Right. So maybe you have like general content that you're putting out there on your website, but then you have kind of like this back end or this, you know, area where people can sign up to get, you know, extra or more or, you know, the bigger picture stuff or more detailed stuff or whatever, or be part of, you know, your site in a different way. So basically you're granting them access to additional content. So maybe a forum or it could even be a group or um, some type of content that's related to your industry. A little different in the sense that in the previous ones where they're signing up, we're then emailing them some document of some type where special access is where they would sign up and then 
we would email them access permissions to some area of our site. If you're selling something online, a great idea is discounts and promo codes. So a lot of people think that, oh, I can just send out the promo code, right? Just blast it out there. And that's great. What if instead of just blasting it out there, you actually took that promo code and said, sign up and we will send you the promo code. We do this all the time with our clients. So if someone wants the promo code, then, hey, you know, fill out your name and email. We'll send you the promo code and here's your 25% off, whatever, your first order or something like that. So now you're building your email list. Another idea is videos. So it doesn't always have to be some written document. It can just be a video. So maybe the, the content is, you know, how to do something, but in a video format. So you can actually upload a video to Vimeo or YouTube and have it, you know, private or, or where people can't just see it, they have to have a special link to it. And then when someone signs up, you send them an email with that link and then they can access that video. Or you can take it a step further and do like a little video mini course. So these are actually really popular to do. You can put together, you know, a series of videos of how to do something and someone signs up and they, you know, want the first day they get your first video. The second day they get your second video. The third day they get your third video, you know, so on and so forth, however long your videos are. So it's kind of like selling a course, but it's through videos, through email. So very effective and an easy way if you're looking to get into doing a digital course to kind of test the waters and build your email list. Or let's say you are coming out with a course. And this is maybe a little off topic here, but it just kind of hit me as an idea. Let's say you are coming out with a course. What if you created a little mini course? that was kind of like an intro to the bigger course. And then you gave that away for free in exchange for an email. Obviously, if someone's gonna sign up for this course, most likely they are interested in the bigger course. Well, the bigger course hasn't launched yet. The mini course is launched. They take the mini course, no cost to them. They're engaged, you've built trust, you, you've got them in the doors, you got their email address, and then you sell them on, hey, here's, here's the bigger course that you can buy. And now you have a trusted, motivated buyer. You can kind of build off of it. So you can kind of leverage that email list. So that's another idea. So they are endless, endless ideas there. Where, whereabouts do you put this gated content? You know, so we're kind of getting more into, you know, how, how it kind of functions, right? So we have the idea, the concept. So we have this value piece and we have someone that's gonna give us their email address and we're gonna send it to them. Okay, well, obviously this, there's, there needs to be some automation set up. There needs to be some, some technical things involved. Some popular ways to, to where to put these is um, just on a pop-up, right? So on pop-ups on your site. So you can have, let's say it's a free discount or a free shipping discount code. If you have an e-commerce shop, you know, that can be like a little pop-up or something, you know, sign up and get free shipping or 10% off your first order. And they fill it, fill out the email, you send them the discount. And this really can work with anything, right? So you can have a pop-up for, you know, I think what we have on our site is like a little corner pop-up so they can, you know, get our, you know, get this, free report, whatever. <clears throat> they, you know, click on it and then it takes them to the page. I do recommend if you have, if you are gonna have like these free, you know, downloads, putting them on your site, but having them on the page of their own. And the reason being, first of all, you wanna kind of treat it as a landing page, as a sales page, right? So you don't want to give them all of the other distractions. You wanna drive them to this page where the one action is to download this item. So try to remove all of the other elements on the page and just talk about the download and the action to download the download. The other reason why you want it on its own special page is because you may want to just drive traffic right to it. So maybe in your social media bios, which I would recommend if you have a free download, is to use that link in your bios and link to your free content so you can start building your list organically. Let's say you run, want to run like a Facebook and Instagram ad to this free download. Well, if it's in your then the middle or bottom of your homepage, it's going to be really hard to do that because people are going to have to navigate to your homepage and then magically find it. Having it on its own page is going to allow you to drive traffic specifically to that item. So always have it on its special page. And I like to have, let's say you have multiple downloads. I like to have multiple pages for each download. So each download has its own page. There is another concept 
that is used when it comes to free downloads. And that's kind of like an all-in-one idea. I forget who I saw using this idea, and it's probably very effective. Uh, they were a very popular person that, you know, has a lot of a big audience. She has had, well, she had a ton of downloads available. Even, I think Digital Marketer actually did this too. And they had, I think they had like, oh, what do they call it? They had a special page for one download, but then they had like access to their all of their stuff you could i think you almost could you pay to get access to all of the stuff but back to this all-in-one idea so different than having a page for each one basically you would have here's all of our free downloads sign up and we'll give you access to all of them so all of the downloads are all on one pl place they sign up one time they get all of the downloads so this is another great idea and i would say it's one to test i personally like the each one having special pages because most likely, at least for us, our downloads are similar in the sense that they serve the same audience, but they're different in the content that of what they are, right? So we have um, a landing page checklist. We have a social media strategy worksheet. Okay, well, if you're talking to someone about these, they're vastly different. Someone that's interested in one is most likely going to be interested in the other. But if I'm trying to sell you on one of them, you know, it's hard to sell you on, you know, the landing page checklist when we're talking about social media. That's why I like having it in a special page. Another way to incorporate these free downloads into your site is if you have a blog, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on a blog, but this is where you see it mostly, um, but it's called a content upgrade. So let's say you have a, a download for, like for example, for us, we have this download for um, your landing page checklist. And let's say we're writing a blog post about, you know, resizing images for your landing page. Well it would make sense that this that free download is kind of what we call a content upgrade. It's going to give you more information similar to the information you're consuming at the time. So it's an upgrade of the content you're consuming. So let's say we have this blog post about this, you know, optimizing your images for your landing pages. And halfway through, we have a little call out that says, hey, you might also like this free download that's going to give you everything you need to know about creating the best landing page. It's a great opportunity because you have this person that's engaged in your article and it's related to the download and they're more likely to go then click on that and download it because it really makes sense. It's a content upgrade. The important piece of doing the content upgrades is that the content upgrade is in line or makes sense with the content that you are putting this call to action on. So if we have a blog post that's about how to write a you know perfect social media bio, and then we link to the and have this content upgrade halfway through that article that's about you know how how to create the best landing page well those are so vastly different in the topic that it doesn't that doesn't that's not an upgrade that's just a, a deterrent if you will that's the difference between a content upgrade another area on, to put on your site where you can have these these um, downloads and call to actions for these downloads is another one is your footer so your footer basically is a global part of your site that's on the bottom and it displays pretty much on every every page of your site and having your call to action down in your footer is going to allow you to have that you know that that download that that gated content on every page so that is um, you only I guess the one thing with that is you want to make sure that your content the, the gated content is re, is going to relate to the audience visiting any one of these pages. So if you have really big different sectors of audience and one download really pertains to one sector and not the other, footer is probably not your best option because it's going to put that download on all of your pages and it's not going to relate to everybody. When you're asking for someone to download something, you really want to make sure that it's at the right time and it's relatable to what they're doing and who they are on your site. So that's where you put them, but how do you make this work? So, okay, great. We know we need gated content. We have the content. We know where to put it on our site, but then what? They click a button and it just magically happens? Absolutely not. <laughs> so how it typically happens is it starts with a form. Maybe you have a call to action on somewhere on your site and they take you to the special page where then 
you have a form. Where can we send this free download? And that's what I actually like to do, opposed to, hey, join our email list. No one wants to get on an email list, right? What you're doing is you're selling them this form. You're selling or you're selling them this, this content upgrade or this uh, gated content. So this free download, the guide, the how-to, the video, you're selling them that. You're not selling them to get on a list. That's your benefit, not theirs. Well, it should be their benefit, but that's not what you're selling. So it's all about the guide, the free download. On this page, when you have this form, the title above the form should be, where can we send your free guide? You know, where can we send your free calendar? Where can we send your free access? And then the button shouldn't be sign up for the list. It should be, or submit. It should be, yes, I want my free guide or yes, send me my free guide. And on the form, you want to make sure that the form is asking for a minimum of an email address, right? Because you have to send it to an email address. And at, at most, I typically don't go any more than just a first name and an email address. If you start asking all of this other stuff, like last name and phone number, then you're asking too much information for a download, right? So remember the value of an email address is six to $10, but the value of, you know, giving more information that starts to become a lot more, you know, starting to give someone their phone number. Well, that's way different. Ask for the minimum information that you need. And all you need is first name, an email address. I like to get the first name in there. The reason being is because now you can personalize their experience and you know who they are. You can talk to them. If you don't know someone's name, you can't talk to them as easy. You want to try to get the first name. And usually people don't have a problem giving the first name. So it starts with the form. Then you need a solution that's going to collect all of these email addresses and store them. What are these solutions? Well, there happens to be a ton of solutions. My top recommendation is autopilot. So autopilot, I think it's autopilothq.com. I will put it in the show notes so you can go to it and check it out. It's what we use. It's what we use for all of our clients. It's really, they've done a lot of new updates to it too. It's super intuitive and, and really easy to use. I've used a lot of them and I always like, I always come back to autopilot. Some other ones because, you know, we like to make sure you have all of your options and there are going to be more than I even even know. Um, but just off the top of my head, there is one of probably more popular ones is MailChimp. Be careful with MailChimp because it comes out as like it's free until you actually need to do something with it and then you have to pay. But it's good. Uh, Clavio, MailChimp, Active Campaign, Drip, ConvertKit, Simplero, Keep, which I'm not familiar with Keep. I like Autopilot. It's our preferred it's easy to use. And what we do is when we pick something, we want to pick something that's going to be easy for us and easy for the client. Okay. So that's, that's your solutions to collect emails. So what, they're all a little different when it comes to the form. Some of them, you have to use their form. Some of them you have to, like, if you're using WordPress, download a plugin and connect it. And, and then you can connect a form. So technically there's no like easy answer. Like you just do this because it's going to be different based off of the different solutions or systems that you're using to collect the email addresses. And they usually provide multiple options. Anyway, so you'd have to explore that, but they all make it pretty easy. Okay, so now that you're collecting these email addresses, this is your email list. This is the gold. This is the asset. This is what you want. And then what's the solution to send out, right? Because you're, you have this landing page, you have a form, they're filling it out, you're collecting their email address, great, but you need to send that document, right? You need to email it to them. There's a couple options here. One is using the solution that you've selected to collect the email address it needs to also be the same solution that sends the email. So, hey, they downloaded this, now initiate this automation or journey and then, you know, add them to this list and then send them this email. And in the email, you have a, you know, personalized email. Thanks for downloading. Here's the link to access your free download, blah, 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 blah. They get the email. And then a great idea at this point is to start setting up some automations. All right, but we'll get to that next. You basically, you need that system that's going to collect the email addresses and then send the email out to your, your people. What next? Now, now we have this, this operation running what do we do? Oh, wait, you know what? I, let me back up. I remember there was something else. I said there was a couple options with, with the sending part, right? So number one is you collect your email, email address into the system. The system then automatically sends them an email 
with a link to the free download. That has to happen. You want that to happen. Second, what you can do is a lot of times these forms that you use when the submit button gets hit, what is the action that happens? Do they just get a thank you message? Do they go to a thank you URL or like a special URL? What you can do is direct them right to the download or direct them to a, a thank you page that has a link on the download. So therefore, they get instant access and they get a followed up email with access. So they kind of get it both ways. So that's another option. By default, at minimum, you need to at least send the email. You have to do that. So what next? So the goal of all of this is to build our email list, to get them into the ecosystem. So then you can communicate and access this pool of motivated potential buyers and customers and you always have instant access to them. So you want to be careful not to obviously be spammy ever, but you also want to make sure that you're, you know, giving value and you're you're in touch with them. So if you're just building an email, that's great, but if you're not doing anything with it, then you know, kind of a little bit of a drop of the ball on that one. So once you're building this email list, you there's a few things that you should have in place. If someone downloads something, usually they're kind of getting introduced to who you are, most likely, right? That's like kind of an entry point into your company or what you offer or who you are. We kind of look at them as kind of higher up on the funnel, kind of a colder lead or someone who's just getting introduced. So what I would recommend after you send them the download a day later or, you know, a couple days later, a follow up email with, you know, how is it going? And then another email after that with, you know, some some more information about maybe like who you are, or your story or your why of what you do. And then a couple days after that, an email that is talks about, you know, how you help people and, you know, some of the pain points that people have when they come to you and how you've solved that and whatever, right? So the whole point of this is to nurture this person and to build trust and communication and turn that person, warm that person up into a buyer, right? So this cold audience that doesn't even know who you are, you're providing value, building trust and nurturing them into a customer. So it's, we call that a nurturing sequence. The other one is to send out a newsletter, right? So just every, every week, every twice a month, you know, send out value. What I would recommend is not to sell. Don't initially think of selling. Stop talking about yourself. Think about what can I provide to this audience? What can I provide to this person? What value can I bring? How can I build trust? How can I show that I'm their trusted advisor? How can I make them the hero and me their trusted sidekick? That's what you want to try to do with your email marketing and this email automation. And that's what these systems do, like autopilot. That's, it allows you to do that effectively and gives you all the tools you need to do that. So that is definitely what you want to do. Send out newsletters. You know, if you have promos, new products, that's, just, you know, you are engaging with that audience. Another case point is, let's say you're a real estate agent. It's such a timely thing with real estate. You know, it's not like, oh, yeah, I'll buy a house today. You know, right? Like we bought a house, you know, two years ago. So we're probably not going to buy another house for another, you know, 10, 15 years maybe. So, and that's how it is. But you know who gets the real estate transaction is the realtor who's top of mind. Everybody knows a realtor. Everybody knows an agent. But who gets the job is the person that is the trusted advisor and last on your mind. Because I bet you, if you really thought about it, you can think of probably a handful of real estate agents that you know that you could go to, at least here in Phoenix. I know that's the case. So being having this email list and, and sending value is being top of mind and staying top of mind. So when that person needs to buy a home or that person has someone who's asking, hey, we need to buy a home, there people love to refer being that person that, hey, these people are great, you know, check them out. Here's their information. You know, that's that's why the email, they, they work so good. They work really good. That is a lot of information that we just went over. Hopefully that was all super helpful. Another critical piece of understanding like your email list and why it's so important. This is actually a quote from somebody. I have to go look and see who this is from. Basically what it is, is an email list is critical because you can't build your content on rented land. So what that means is, 
So many people focus on social and social is great. You should be focusing on social, but understand it's a rented land. When social platform changes or you get kicked off or your content gets banned or people leave or people will stop showing up or they go to the other, the platform, you don't own them, right? You don't have them in your ecosystem. They are still outside your ecosystem. Once you have their email address, they're in your ecosystem. They're in your family. You want their email address. So that way you know you can have this audience to nurture and communicate with. Social is great, but it's rented land and you don't own it. So if it goes away, it goes away. If they turn things off or turn things on or whatever, you have no control over that. Anyway, that's my last takeaway there. Um, All right, I think this wraps us up on how to build your email list through gated content. I hope you found this super valuable. If you did, please subscribe, share this with your friends and anyone else who you think might get value from this. Um, I appreciate your time and we'll see you in the next episode.